Wait, did, uh, did I hear that right? Monsieur Nirvalet, are you sure you'd like to take over the case yourself? That's right. No, oh, but why? Technically speaking, cases like this are better left to the guards. Nivellet! Sabine! Hey there! What are you two talking about? Ugh, Traveler and Paimon, please help me talk our Chief Justice out of this. He wants to investigate a case on his own. Now, this is completely unprecedented. How can we have the Udex acting like a private detective? Hmm? Thank you for your concern, but I currently have no such plans. Oh, apologies. I took your question in earnest, but it now occurs to me that it was most likely in jest. <sighs> the weather's amazing today. Kiara. Huh? Monsieur Nevelette! And you are? Oh, I remember. You're the Traveler and Paimon. I've heard about you. Hey there, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> Thanks for the compliments. Is there anything I can do for you? I heard from Sedine that you received a threatening letter. A threatening letter? Oh, right. I remember now. The letter fell through the crack in my door as I was heading out this morning. It said something about catching me, so I thought someone wanted to play hide-and-seek. But Sidine told me it was a threatening letter, and that I could be in danger. But that's not going to happen with everyone looking after me, right? Have you run into any suspicious-looking people recently? Suspicious-looking people? What counts as suspicious? Ah! Oh, did you think of something? Nope. I don't remember meeting anyone like that. Do you still have the letter with you? I want you to show me what it says. Oh, uh, let's see. Found it. Now then, <clears throat> get lost. If you don't leave the Mare Chaussee Phantom, I will come and catch you in person. Don't say I didn't warn you. Hmm, a simple threat. Neither the handwriting nor the content itself reveals anything about the writer's intentions. We can't rule out that possibility. Since you can't think of anyone suspicious, I will be heading back to the Palais Memonia to review some official documents. Kiara, you should come with us. It's safer if you stay close by. Sure! Uh, wait, no, no, no. I, I still have a case to work on. I promised Ailoff that I'd check on her place later. But you are being watched right now. Going off on your own could be dangerous. And that's where we come in to help. We'll stay with Kiara and make sure she's safe. But that's around anyone scheming to hurt Kiara can forget about it. Thank you, Traveler. Big sis Paimon. Uh, oh, uh, ahem. Don't worry, your big sis Paimon is super strong. All right, let us go our separate ways for now. Please take care of Kiara. We'll take her to a lost place right away. See you around. So, Kiara, how old are you? Hmm, let me think. One, two, ten? Uh, I can't remember. But I remember coming to the Court of Fontaine with Carol and Nuvillette. That must have been a long time ago. Carol? Did Nuvillette mention her just now? That was more than... 400 years ago! Why would Paimon be a big sister to you? My memory isn't that good, but Carol told me I could address others based on how I feel about them. Paimon feels a lot more grown up than me, so you're a big sis. Huh, Paimon sees. Uh, hey, Traveler, did you hear that? Strange. Paimon felt like someone was following us. Kiara, you're here. Huh? Wait, aren't these two... Oh, they're the Traveler and Big Sis Paimon. I thought so. What brings you here? All right, guess I shouldn't have asked. May I begin inspecting the store as planned? Of course. Go ahead. 
Hmm. No hazards detected. You've cleared the inspection. Seems like the criminal from that case last month never set foot in here at all. That was quick. What were you inspecting? I took a look around the shop. Navilat says that us Malazines have special eyes that can see things people can't. Things like blood stains. No matter how hard you try to clean them up, we Malazines can see their residual stains for some time. Pretty cool, huh? All right, all right. Now that you're done inspecting, can we have a chat? Hear me out. I'm planning to release an outfit for children next month and wanted to hire you as my model. Is that okay with you? Of course. Is there anything I need to do? Please wait a moment while I take your measurements. The sample should be a perfect fit. Seems like they get along really well. Huh? What are you looking at? Is there really someone watching us? Shh. Let's sneak over and take a look. Strange. Why isn't he back yet? Gotcha! Ah! Charlotte, what are you doing here? Oh, wait, don't tell Paimon you're the one who sent Kiara that threatening letter. But you don't seem like the type to... Threat letter? What threat letter? Uh, this is starting to feel like an interrogation. Okay, I'll be straight with you. I don't know the slightest thing about that threat letter you mentioned. I only wanted to follow Monsieur Nouvellet and request an interview with him. You want to interview him? That's right. I'm not the only one, you know. Interviewing him is every journalist's dream. But it's not an easy task to accomplish. The Palais Mermonia rarely accepts appointment requests from us, and we never have the chance to interrupt when the court's in session. So imagine how surprised I was seeing him out on the streets today. It seemed like you were investigating something, too. The perfect opportunity to whip up an exclusive, don't you think? Of course, I'll make sure to turn in my manuscript to him for review. I have my principles, and I'd never publish an article without the consent of all parties involved. Yeah, we're doing a secret investigation that can't be made public knowledge. I see. Well, if you say so, I guess I'll put this matter aside for now. Oh, what a shame. Chances like this don't come by very often, you know. In exchange, could you tell me what the threat letter is about? I swear I won't tell. All right, then. What? Someone's targeting a cute little melazine. Shh, not so loud. It just so happens that I did an interview with Kiara. Last month, in fact. It was well received by our readers, so I was planning to continue the series. And now someone's coming after her. I'll ask my colleagues about it. Who knows? We might find something. And don't worry. I know what I'm doing. This secret's safe with me. But I gotta warn you. Even if I keep my lips sealed, others will know eventually. Why? People care a great deal about Monsieur Nouvellet's each and every move. Some may have already realized that something was up. Besides, the case involves melazines, so... Anyway, I'll get going now. Watch yourselves, all right? Well, that was a nice chat. <clears throat> Let's head back and check on Kiara. What do you think? The design looks pretty good, huh? I think it's great! Huh. It's very pretty indeed. Harad! What are you doing here? It seems that you just showed up out of nowhere! As I passed by the Palais Mermonia, I heard that Nouvellette was investigating a case with you. Technically speaking, he and I are under an employer-employee relationship. It didn't feel right to have my employer personally take on such trivial cases. I happen to have some time at the moment, and came to take a look. I sometimes have my clothes custom-made at this boutique, in any case, so we always have a lot to talk about. Ah, oh, Nervalet sure is lucky to have someone like you. Leave this to me. You should go meet up with Nervalet. Okay, then, we'll leave Kiara in your hands. <sighs> Come on, let's go find Nervalet. Oh, you're back. Is everything all right? We ran into Clorand. She offered to help us protect...
Takira. That is good to hear. I trust her abilities. It looks like Kiara is in good hands. We thought so too. Well, did you find any leads? I've been looking over the case records, specifically inspection reports submitted by Kiara and major cases I have judged over the past decade. I have come up with two plans. On one hand, I could start with Kiara and track down the group behind all this step by step. On the other, I could also analyze the conflicting interests of these major cases and confirm my suspicions if there is indeed a mysterious group that bears a grudge against me. Hmm. They both sound like pretty solid plans, but can you really finish browsing through all these documents? That's a lot of reading, even for Paimon. Don't worry. I'm a fast reader when it comes to official documents. After all, I have several hundred years of reviewing under my belt. We'll help you read through them. We have nothing else to do. Thank you. I will continue looking through the ones piled up on the desk, but feel free to browse through anything else in this room. Have you made any progress? We skimmed through some of them, but there wasn't anything useful. Oh, there are so many documents lying around. Just how many cases have you handled? I would love to answer that question, but the truth is I've never made a precise calculation myself. If memory serves me right, there should be at least 100,000 cases. The documents you see are just a small fraction of what's really there. Whoa, that's a lot. Looks like the work of a Chief Justice isn't easy at all. That might be how it seems from another's perspective, but trials and official duties are, to me, simply routine. There are many documents here. Take a break if you are tired. <sighs> you read Paimon's mind. All right. Let us take a break, then. Ah. <clears throat> uh... Even though resting is a part of taking a break, shouldn't we at least talk about something? All this silence is making Paimon feel really awkward. Please pardon my lack of consideration. People rarely come to the Palais Memonia for matters outside of work. To be quite honest, I am not sure what we should do. Would you like to have some drinks, perhaps? You must be thirsty after all that work. Paimon wonders what Novelette likes to drink. Oh, maybe he's a fan of really fancy wines. He seems like the type of person who'd own an entire winery. You know, like D. Luke. Uh, what's inside these glasses? It looks just like water. An astute observation. It is indeed water. So it's just plain old water? What did you think it was? Um, since you're the Chief Justice and all, Paimon thought you'd prefer something more... sophisticated. This water is indeed very special. It would not be an overstatement to call it sophisticated. Huh? I believe you've already tried Fanta. In fact, there are many other drink factories in Fontaine including those that specialize in packaging pure drinking water. Said water is sourced from all across Tevat, including Mondstadt's Cider Lake, Liu's Chintsa Village, and Inazuma's Konda Village. Here is one of their latest products, water from Sumeru's Apam Woods. If I were to comment on their mouthfeel, hmm, the waters of Cider Lake warm the heart, the waters of Chintsa Village have a poignant touch, while one might call the waters of Konda Village uh, placid. Distinct differences exist between the waters of each area. You will appreciate their intricacies once you taste them carefully. Really? Let Paimon try! What do you think? Uh, nope. Paimon couldn't taste any difference at all. Isn't this just normal water? <sighs> How regrettable. 
It seems like you still have a long way to go in refining your tastes. Hey, this doesn't have to do with refining our tastes. Paimon's pretty sure most ordinary people can't tell the difference. How did you do it anyway? Oh, could it be because you're the Hydro Dragon? Uh, we are allowed to bring that up, right? Since no one else is around? Oh, Paimon's been wanting to ask this for ages. If you're the Hydro Dragon, why would you become Chief Justice in human society? Hmm. Uh, sorry. Paimon was just curious. You don't have to answer. There's nothing to hide. I was simply organizing my thoughts. I accepted this position because I wanted to seek out answers to questions that have perplexed me. Questions? Are there really things you can't figure out? Many, in fact. But the one question that puzzles me the most concerns my own existence. In essence, I neither know why I was born in this form, nor do I understand where my long life should take me. I lost many memories from the moment I was born. The Primordial Sea, for example. I can only vaguely recall its connection to me, but I am unaware of what that connection is exactly. Perhaps the elemental dragons of other nations may have some form of an answer. However, they are scattered across all of Tevat. Abruptly visiting could very well pose an unpredictable risk. True. Some of them have very... unique personalities, too. I have been holding on to these unanswered questions for a long time. But there is one thing I've discovered along the way. My emotions easily resonate with those of others. Even I don't have the slightest idea what they mean. My guess would be that there are at least some similarities between humans and myself. By observing their behavior, perhaps I could one day understand the meaning of my existence. Have you made any progress, then? Perhaps, but I find such progress difficult to describe. As an outsider, chances to engage in meaningful interactions with others are few and far between. That's why I'm quite thankful for this chat. Such opportunities are rare. <sighs> Alas, time is limited. We should move on with our investigation. Are we gonna continue reading these documents? Ugh, Paimon's getting dizzy already. I wasn't able to find any leads even after browsing through most of the documents. But while we were on the topic of water a moment ago, another idea came to me. Water? Do you mean... That's right. The Fountain of Lucene is where all of Fontaine's waters converge. It is the vessel of countless memories and emotions. If there really were an organization attempting to use Melusines against me, they should also hold an intense resentment towards me. Perhaps we'll be able to find some new leads by sensing the hydro element within the fountain. Huh. Why didn't Paimon think of that? Come on, let's go take a look! Perhaps we should go. There shouldn't be too many people near the Fountain of Lucene during the evening. Looks like we got lucky today. There's hardly anyone around. Uh, what should we do next? Oh, Traveler, can you still hear the voices from the fountain? Perhaps leave the investigation to me. I need you to take a few steps back and keep a safe distance. A safe distance? Nivellet, what exactly are you... Oh, it's glowing! Uh, thank you for bringing us here, Monsieur Nivellet. The Corps de Fontaine is truly incredible. There's so many things I've never seen or heard before. I understand your excitement, but there's no need to thank me. Although I have responded to your wishes, it was not without personal interest. Melusine's special sight make them especially suited for joining the Mare Chaussée Phantom. I'm certain you'll become an indispensable part of Fontaine's detective force. I know, but I'm really glad to be of help. Not only can I repay you for your kindness, but also, it feels like my life has become a lot more meaningful. But a meaningful life also comes with its risks. 
it's definitely the safest to just stay in the village. But I want to see the outside world nonetheless. In truth, I've never really understood the purpose of my existence, or what I'm capable of contributing to this world. For almost 20 years, we've stayed in our village without finding any answers. That's why we wanted to leave our village and look for the meaning of our existence elsewhere. Hmm. I understand your confusion. In fact, I feel the same way. I too came here for an answer to my questions about my own existence. Really? Could you tell us what we should do to fit in as you did? The truth is, many people threw rocks at us today and told us to go back to our village. It hurt a lot when they hit me in the head, and I tried really hard not to cry. Logically speaking, both time and effort are essential when different species attempt to peacefully coexist. It will be a difficult road ahead, with countless obstacles to overcome. Different identities and ways of thinking all contribute to strengthening the barrier between one another. Removing it will be no easy feat. There aren't many suggestions I can share, because just like you, I haven't fully integrated into this society. Despite my social status, I am still an outsider. Oh, I see. Let's all do our best, then. I'm confident that we'll find the meaning of our existence one day. I believe in you, but you shouldn't lose sight of the difficulties ahead. If you run into any trouble, I suggest that you inform Votran, the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Huh? Is he the person I met in the Palais Marmonia earlier? Yes. Do you have any concerns? That stone-faced human. He didn't even bother to look at me when I tried talking to him. It felt like he wasn't interested in anything but work. He is an earnest man. There will be plenty of opportunities to work together in the future, so please try to get along. Hello. Can I help with anything? Thanks, but no need. Oh. Hello. I'm Carol, a melazine. Is there anything you need help with? Get away from here! I'm calling the guards! Please, calm down. I don't mean to cause any harm. Hmm, hard to say. Yeah, we should probably stay away from these monsters. Haven't you realized? Strange incidents have been increasing ever since they came. Why should we trust this species from who knows where anyway? I can't believe Nervilat allowed them into the court of Fontaine just like that. Exactly. That so-called Chief Justice even granted them official positions. Not only that, but they're now responsible for investigating cases as well. I swear, there's some hidden agenda at play here. Go away! Quit acting innocent! I'm not leaving! I won't let you say bad stuff about him! We joined the Mari Chausse Phantom and solved lots and lots of cases. We've never done anything wrong! Solving cases? With Nervilet in cahoots with you. You could have fabricated it all, and no one would know. So tell me, how can you guarantee that you Melazines aren't involved in anything that occurred recently? Uh, I... Didn't I tell you before? Don't go advertising if you're not a good talker. Votre? Aside from spreading unjustified rumors, if you continue insulting members of the Mare Chaussee Phantom, the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol has every right to subject you to interrogation. There have indeed been an increase in cases recently, perhaps due to the shifting currents of conspiracy, and I understand your concern. However, there's been no evidence pointing towards Melazines being involved. <laughs> Even the captain of the security patrol is on their side. Nervilet's newly reformed police force is already corrupt to the core. How can two completely different species possibly coexist? You heard that? Yeah. I don't understand. Why won't anyone believe us? 
There have been rumors saying that you were born from calamity and that you inherently bring danger to those around you. There are countless negative rumors about you floating around in Fontaine. It's near impossible for you to become a part of this society. Best if you give up before it's too late. Monsieur Nervalette said that we needed to put both time and effort in. I don't know how long it'll take, but I can at least try making my best effort. I still want to try a little harder. Thank you for bailing me out earlier. <sighs> okay, I won't be taking any more of your time. I painted a lot of flyers last night, so I have to stay and hand them out to everyone. Give them to me. You're, you're not going to take them away, right? We'll hand them out together. The faster we get this done, the sooner we can head back. Monsieur Nevelet, what's this? Medals of Peace, awarded to you and Vautram. Thank you for your continued dedication in the past five years. You've taken one small step forward in helping Melusines gain the trust of humans. I think I'll pass. Hey, don't say that. We wouldn't have made it this far without you. It won't be long before Melusines begin living peacefully with the humans. Just the thought of it makes me happy. Don't keep your hopes up. We've barely scratched the surface. There's still a long way to go before that dream of yours comes true. Ugh, you blockhead! Don't ruin the mood! Hmm. Botran brings up a good point. The trust humans have placed in you is still very fragile. Any small incident could undermine the hard work you've put in. Please be on your guard for the next few days. Yes, sir. Okay, got it. Medal of Peace? <laughs> Peace isn't going to give us back what's rightfully ours. Are you sure we should do this? We're no match for Nervalette, even with all our powers combined. What if... Nah, not gonna happen. As long as he remains in his position, there's no chance he'd take us out personally. There are rules even he must comply with in the political sphere, unless he wants to become an enemy of Fontaine. So quit worrying and just go ahead with it. I've already planned out the murder. Once we lay the blame on the Melusines as the person who brought them to the court of Fontaine, Nervy Lett will be left with no excuse. I guess you're right. Ugh. If he just left things the way they were, it never would have come to this. But he's forced our hand. Time to teach him a lesson. Turn the murderer in! Melusines can't be trusted! That goes for Nervy Lett too! Peaceful coexistence? What a joke. Get out of the court of Fontaine and don't ever come back. The results of the investigation are in, Captain Voltron. Go on. There is no direct evidence, but reasonable inference indicates that the ones controlling the situation are supporters of the old regime, whose interests have been undermined by the reform. They tricked Miss Carroll into going to the crime scene and pressed charges against her. After that, they incited panic among the people in order to make Monsieur Nervillette confess to his mistakes and yield up power. The guards were stopped by the enraged mob and couldn't intervene in time. Miss Carol chose to sacrifice herself to pacify the situation. And she called me a blockhead. A little investigation would have cleared things up. Why didn't she wait until we'd established the truth? She didn't have to prove her innocence like that. The situation had rapidly escalated to a physical altercation between infuriated citizens and the guards. Miss Carol might have thought there was no better plan. <sighs> that is indeed something she'd do. Captain Voltra, should I present these results to Monsieur Nervillette right away? There's no need. Notify the guards to restrict public access to all information. Restrict access to... Wait, are you planning to... <sighs> There's something I've never told, Carol. 
I had a little sister named Delaria who passed away when I was very young. She's just like Carol in every possible way. Innocent, kind, always believing the best of people. People like her are the most vulnerable to deception and betrayal. From the moment I met Carol, I knew that she'd be easily manipulated by others. I kept a cold demeanor and tried lecturing her into giving up. Looks like she was unfazed by that. <sighs> yes. In fact, some of her spirit must have rubbed off on me instead. Because I too began working towards that pie-in-the-sky dream of hers. I should have known. Those cowards don't have the guts to confront New Villette. They even avoided causing trouble for me. They were after Carol all along. Can you understand how I feel? Right now, there's only one thought on my mind. Only through bloodshed can their debt be repaid. I understand, but I'm certain Monsieur Nervalet wouldn't accept that as a solution. That's exactly why we need to keep this a secret. Give me the list of suspects. What happens after this has nothing to do with any of you. I will take responsibility for everything. Did you know? They're hearing a major case today, and the criminal is Captain Vautrin of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Apparently, he resorted to personal measures to seek revenge for Carol and settled the score with the group that framed his friend. <sighs> hey, why aren't you saying anything? I'm thinking... We should try our best to bail him out when the trial commences. Bail him out? Why? Shh, keep it down! Haven't you realized? Both Votran and Carol are Nervilet's most trusted subordinates. After everything that happened to Carol, Nervilet's guaranteed to do everything he can to keep Votran around. Besides, now that the old regime has been uprooted, Nervilet's status is secure as can be. As long as we redirect public opinion, Nervilet will be able to give Votran a reprieve. The benefits are endless. Votran sought vengeance for his friend for a valid cause. This represents the justice he upholds. Please think about it. If the same thing had happened to you, wouldn't you feel the same way he did? Yeah, that's right! This whole thing started because of those despicable cowards who levied false accusations against Carol. How could Vautrin be declared guilty for seeking revenge? Monsieur Nouvellet. Mr. Vautrin is innocent! He's, He's innocent. innocent! Order! I acknowledge your arguments. For Tran, your revenge could be seen as a form of justice. I understand your decision, which is why I cannot help but feel regret and even grief about the judgment I must now impose. Personal justice does not equate to justice as defined by the law. To execute your plan for revenge, you abused your authority and conducted informal executions. Your actions have thus violated the law. Therefore, you will be declared guilty. What? That can't be! Monsieur Nervillette, please give this a little more thought. He has done so much for Fontaine. Votran, my friend, is there anything else you want to say? Nervillette. What have I done to deserve this? I've closely followed every one of your orders. Can't you see? Everyone in this room believes that I'm innocent. Why can't you just let me off? Is this what justice means to you? Answer me, Nuvillet! Order. Since there have been no further objections, the Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Vautrin. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Vautrin will be declared guilty. Goodbye, Monsieur Nuvillette. This all happened because of Carol's naive ideas. How can different species peacefully coexist anyway? Hey, stop spacing out! What's wrong? 
Jane, are you not feeling well? Apologies, it seems like my memories got the better of me. I tried my best to suppress the power of Hydro within myself, but it seems like it still caused the emotions within the Fountain of Lucene to boil over. Due to my negligence, the overflow of emotions and memories must have affected you as well. Are you all right? Wow. The Hydro Dragon is more powerful than Paimon thought. Anyways, the last time we came here, the Traveler only heard voices from the Fountain of Lucene. No emotions boiling over or anything. It is as you said. This might be because I am different. It is not only the fountain. I can sense emotions from all waters in Fontaine. Rivers, lakes, and even the rain. That sounds awesome! But I rarely ever do anything like this. Emotions carried by water are always chaotic and disconnected. As an outsider, having my mind occupied with irrelevant memories isn't exactly a pleasant experience. Which ones? <laughs> it's fine. I prefer not to speak of those memories, but that does not mean I am deliberately hiding them. It was a coincidence, but perhaps it is a good thing that you saw everything in that form. You should now understand why I believe there to be a conspiracy behind all this. These two cases are much too similar. I felt like I needed to do something. Uh, Paimon's starting to lose track of what you're saying. Don't leave Paimon out of the conversation. Paimon wants to help too. Then let us get back to the point. While I was investigating the fountain, I discovered something strange. I did not sense too much hatred towards me within its accumulated emotions. However, I did find some resentment directed towards Kiara. If I remember correctly, it seemed to be related to a smuggling case. I don't know what caused this to happen, but it seems like there won't be a shortcut to finding the organization that may be pulling the strings here. Oh! Didn't we read about that in one of the documents? You've read about it. In that case, the resentment should have come from that incident. Huh? What are you doing here? I was just about to look for you at the Palais Mermonia. Navia! Nice to see you again! Is there something we can help with? I've heard some things. But I'm not purposely asking around or anything. Don't worry. Rumors are abroad that someone's scheming against Melusines and that you're investigating the case. So I told the Spina di Rosula to keep an eye out for leads. We've had unfamiliar faces showing themselves at the Fleuve Sandra lately. Maybe you'll find the suspects among them. Thank you. Where did you hear about all this? The Chief Justice out on investigation, accompanied by the Traveler from afar. No matter how you conceal your whereabouts, there will be countless eyes watching you. You talked to Kiara, but didn't ask her to keep things secret. People curious to know asked around for information, then it was only a matter of time before word of the threatening letter spread all across Fontaine. So that's what Charlotte meant. Indeed. I did not expect that this could be kept hidden for too long, but the rumors still spread faster than I imagined. Hmm. You know, it could be because... You attract more attention than you think. Anyway, any progress with the investigation? The suspects who threatened Kiara might have to do with a certain smuggling case, but it is still uncertain if there is in fact another party behind all this. We are planning to return to the Palais Mormonia to revisit some details and identify the senders of that threatening letter. All right, then I'll round up the Spina di Rosula and follow up on their progress. Wait for my word. Ta-ta! Uh, Nevelet, do you think there'll be any problems now that the word is out? I have already considered that possibility, and I do not think that there will be any. As a matter of fact, once the word gets out, no one would dare to harm Kiara in broad daylight. What is more important is how the case is perceived by the public. Four hundred years ago, they chose to side with the old regime and direct their resentment towards the Melusines. I hope the same won't happen again. Let us head back to the Palais. 
Strange. What are these people doing out on the street so late at night? Did something happen? Let's take a look around. Have you heard? Someone's plotting against Amelazine. This is 100% the truth. Even the Chief Justice is investigating in person. What? That's it! Who's been threatening Melazines? Show yourself! Our enemies are lurking in the shadows and won't easily reveal themselves. But no amount of hiding will keep us from finding them. That's exactly what I wanted to say. The guards have already begun to take action. We can't just stand by and watch. Think about how much we owe them. Now that they're in danger, how can we just sit back and do nothing? Everyone, please stay alert to your surroundings from now on. If you see any suspicious persons, report them to the guards immediately. It feels like you've been following me this whole time. Did something happen? We were informed that. <clears throat> nope. We just finished our shifts and happened to be strolling by. Have you had dinner yet? Why don't we check out the new items at the dessert shop together? This isn't a good time to be out and about. Come on, don't act tough. I bet you're hungry too. <sighs> All right, let's go buy a cake or something. You shouldn't ever skip meals, especially if you have another shift scheduled for later. I heard even Nervulet's keeping an eye on the situation. <laughs> this is the perfect chance to get promoted. We gotta make sure we give it all we've got. Seriously? Were you planning to shirk your duties if Nervilette wasn't involved? Relax, I was just playing. We've worked together for years now. If something happened to them, I'd be haunted by regret for the rest of my life. That's more like it. We should stand guard until the criminal has been caught. Come and fight me instead, you cowards! Have you heard? Even the special patrol came to help. Shh, look. Is it that Nervulet? I think he's looking at us. <sighs> Looks like there's nothing to worry about. Hmm. This is truly wonderful. So, wanna go over and say hi? No, I should stay where I am. My appearance could give rise to unnecessary commotion. Let us stick to our plan and return to the Palais Mamonia. The faster we uncover the truth, the better. The smuggling case was solved by the joint forces of the guards and the Marechaussee Phantom. This is the one. The list of involved suspects should be... Ah, found it. What does it say? The principal offenders Domenico, Inica, Yuna, and others have been caught. They have been sent to the fortress of Meropede following trial. Those with close connections or mutual interests with the offenders but who did not participate in the case will not stand trial. Among them, surveillance of Essain has ceased on account of his good behavior. All other personnel remain on our watch list. So many names. Is the one who sent that threatening letter to Kiara on the list? Yes, there is something suspicious about Essain, to be precise. It seems like he's closely related to the core members of the smuggling case, and he moves around without much restriction. Monsieur Nervillet, someone claiming to be from the Spina du Rasula just checked in with us. He said, and I quote, <clears throat> We have located the suspect, they're chatting at the cafe. Huh? How did Navia find them so quickly? We've only just figured out the suspect's name! I too am perplexed. The cafe isn't too far from here. We should head over and take a look. Hey, Navia, we're here! Whoa, check out all these people! Uh, hey there, are you Navia's friends too? These are the people who have had recent dealings at the Marechaussee Phantom. They're usually hidden in the Fleuve Sandra, but I sent for someone to invite them over. Invite them over? Exactly. Now, I heard there's great coffee here, and so I asked them if they'd like to come and have some. Yeah, it's our pleasure to be guests of the Spina di Rosula. <laughs> I've wanted to have a meetup like this for ages. Uh, something feels off. But, oh well, let's get back to business. Is there anyone called Essa here? 
Yes, I, that's me. Your essa? Yes, yes, Monsieur Nervilette. Did you write that threatening letter to Kiara? Um. Uh, <clears throat> I, I did, but I, I was just following orders. Orders from whom? Dominico. He was my boss. I couldn't disobey his orders. Dominico? Where is he now? The fortress of Meropede. Well, uh, I'm afraid even the Spina would have trouble looking into that place. Looks like you'll have to make the trip yourselves. This was as much as I could do. You've done more than enough. I'm extremely grateful for your help. Leave the formalities for later. You should find Dominico first. If he really is the one setting up the conspiracy, it'd be best if he's exposed as soon as possible. All right, then. Let's head to the fortress right now! Welcome to the Fortress of Meripede, dear esteemed guests. We're back! Oh, and a greeting from none other than the Duke himself! Guess we made a name for ourselves at this place. <laughs> this isn't anything new. I figured you had important matters to discuss when the two of you, not to mention the Chief Justice, showed up. Let's assume we've gone through the pleasantries and cut right to the chase. Hmm. I do remember a thing or two about Dominico. He once attempted to round up the other inmates and instigate a protest. Who does this guy think he is? Uh, Paimon hopes nothing came of it. He once attempted to, I said, meaning that it was over before it even started. And now he's threatening Melazines, is he? To be honest, Dominico doesn't seem like much of a conspirator. The fact that the three of you bothered to personally investigate raises a flag. Is there something else going on behind the scenes here? <sighs> He's got the same concerns we do. I am concerned about this incident because something similar has occurred in the past. I wish to meet Dominico in person and have my questions answered. That's an easy one. Let me think. I think he's at... Oh, did I hear someone say Melazine? What happened? Seedween! Yeah, and we're investigating. The person who threatened her seems to be imprisoned here. Really? Is Kiara gonna be okay? There's no need to worry. Clarand is protecting her as we speak. <sighs> well, that's great. But if the criminal's still... Is there anything you can do about this? Ah, head nurse. Do you require me to personally deal with the criminal? Rithesley. Okay, I get it. I'll bring Dominico to you. That's your only demand, correct? Think of it as more of a humble request. I'm here on my own accord, not to formally transfer a criminal for trial. I urge you to set aside any concerns. Thanks for the trouble. Consider me in your debt. Whoa! If Paima were you here, Grace, Paima would take this chance to ask for something really important. Well, were I still a criminal, I'd probably ask for a lighter sentence. But I'm sure Monsieur Nervillette would reject that. But enough jokes. I'll look for Dominico and bring him to you. Make yourselves at home. Our dear head nurse has mentioned you quite a few times, so I'm sure she has a lot to say. Please come with me to the infirmary. Ah, and watch your step. There's some pretty dark areas, so make sure you don't trip over anything. Did Nervilette just walk by? We just had a new member join us last month. Now that I think about it, I can leave this place soon. Uh, huh? Please rest here for a moment. Oh, and would anyone like anything to drink? Paimon's mm, not that thirsty, but thanks anyway. Thirst is a warning sign that you're dehydrated, which means you have to drink up even before that. I'll bring you some tea. I'm sure you'll have a lot to talk about. Ah, <sighs> typical Seedwing. Concerned about everyone's health as always. Uh... Why aren't you two saying anything? You noticed them too. The badges they wore on their chests looked quite familiar. 
Familiar? Uh, Paimon didn't even realize they were wearing them. But if both of you say so, let's go ask them about it. That's not a bad idea. I will stay here and wait for news from you. Anything you need? Oh, this? Are you interested in joining the Mutual Aid Network? What's that? We have a very long history, going back as far as 400 years ago. We have never had many members throughout our history, nor do we have much of a reputation, but everyone treats each other like family. Helping each other is our purpose. At the same time, we seek to maintain just dealings as much as possible. Sounds like a pretty neat organization. <laughs> All we want is to defend ourselves. None of us have ever committed serious crimes, and we're not especially powerful either. We're at a natural disadvantage here in the fortress. But people won't give us a hard time if we stick together. Interested in joining the Mutual Aid Network? If you'd like to learn more, here's our flyer. Our slogan may have evolved over the centuries, but our goal has remained unchanged. Here, this book is for you. You're welcome to come and sign up anytime. Hmm. You two look kind of familiar. It's the symbol of the Mutual Aid Network designed by our first president. From what I've heard, it's based on something called a Medal of Peace. I've never seen one of those medals for myself, though. The first president of our network was an amazing person. Powerful as he was, he never used his strength against anyone. He encouraged the weaker criminals to stick together and look out for each other. All of us have a lot of respect for him. We should have gathered enough information. Let's head back and talk to Nervalette. Did you manage to gather any intel? Mm-hmm. The people who wore the badges belong to an organization called the Mutual Aid Network. According to them, the badge's design was inspired by the Medal of Peace. Have you seen any of those before? I personally crafted two of them myself. They were awarded to Carol and Vautrin. Carol's medal was destroyed in a fire. The only one that remained should belong to Vautrin. Oh. So the network was inspired by... Monsieur Nervillette, his grace has requested your presence in his office. He's found Dominico. Hmm. All right. Let us talk to him first and get to the bottom of this situation. Allow me to introduce this... fine gentleman, Dominico. Why don't you explain everything to him? N-Nervillette? Wh what do you want? What are you gonna do, kill me? Calm down. I merely want to ask you a few questions. Was it your idea to send that letter to a Melusine? Uh, I... Uh... Essain has already confessed, so there really isn't any need to keep hiding. Oh, that idiot! I can't believe I trusted him! Let me ask this another way. It was your idea to send that letter, correct? <sighs> yes. Who is pulling your strings? What? You're not trying to frame me for something I haven't done, are you? Hmm. It's best if you realize the gravity of your situation. The Chief Justice of Fontaine has been personally investigating your case. I assume your previous attempt to incite unrest at the Fortress of Meripede has something to do with this as well. I... I admit I acted on impulse. I'll tell you the truth. But before that, you must ensure my safety. I can do that. You see, we're all reasonable people here. I only intended to do some small business at first. Someone contacted me about delivering some goods and promised me a generous sum of more in return. After making a few trips, I was suddenly approached by the Marichaussee Phantom. They accused me of smuggling prohibited items, and I was put on trial. But I refused to accept any of that. The ignorant can be rightfully absolved from guilt, right? Well, I suspect that someone got me locked up here so they could get their hands on my goods. <sighs> hmm. And then you decided to take revenge on the Melazines? Over that? 
My initial target was Nervi Lett. Everyone in the forces of Meripede was declared guilty by him, after all. So they must more or less hold a grudge against them, right? If I could get them to strike back... But for some reason, no one wanted to team up with me. That mutual aid network in particular. What did those nobodies even gain from trying to challenge me? Seriously. In the end, I had to redirect my focus onto Melazines to salvage things. I recall that Kiara was the one who confiscated my goods for inspection, so I asked one of the more approachable guards to send a letter, claiming that I meant to contact my family. But the letter was in fact addressed to Essa. I requested that he write a threat letter to Kiara and force it to resign from the Mari Chaussee Phantom. Am I to assume that the claims you've made are your own thoughts? Have you been in contact with any suspicious people recently? No. Is it true that all members involved in the smuggling scandal have been caught? Yes. And that's all I know. Hmm. <laughs> Sijuin, please take him back to the detention center. I'll deal with him later. So, Monsieur Nivillette, you were concerned that there might be a shadowy faction looking to capitalize on the delicate situation with the Melazines to stir up greater chaos? Yes. I experienced a similar incident in the past, so I had to be prepared for any possibility. And how long ago was this incident? More than 400 years. You might be overthinking this. Time can change a lot of things. Everything's different now. What do you mean? 400 years ago, you and the Melazines you brought to Fontaine were the outliers in society. But in the present day, if someone were to threaten the safety of the Melazines, people wouldn't just sit back and do nothing. I trust that they would make different choices from before. That's right! We saw lots of people standing up for Melazines on our way back to the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nevillette, the Melazines are a species you introduced to Fontaine. How the public treats them is also reflective of their attitude towards you. When people refused to place their trust in Melazines, it was because they were still on the fence about you, their unfamiliar Chief Justice. For almost 500 years, you've conducted every trial with impartiality. You made the right judgment each time regardless of whatever nonsense went on. People no longer have any reservations about you and even consider you a symbol of the law. Right now, your every decision will impact all of Fontaine. In other words, you've gradually transformed the whole nation. Paimon gets it now. No wonder no one wanted to join forces with Dominico. I am undeserving of such high compliments. From my perspective, I have simply been fulfilling my duties. It isn't anything special or worthy of praise. I'm simply fulfilling the promises I've made and searching for answers through my judgments. It is unnecessary to hold me in such high regard. The complexity of human emotions and willpower far exceed those of mine. As a matter of fact, I believe that you are the ones who deserve my respect. There's no need to be so modest. The current state of affairs says it all. You're no longer that outsider you were before. Even if you wished to investigate something on your own, many would take the initiative to lend you a hand. I must say that you've made a fair point. Thank you for clearing my doubts. Now that the case has been settled, I should get going. Huh? You're leaving? And so soon, too? Why not stay for a cup of tea? Thank you for the offer, but I know how this place works all too well. While some are here to redeem themselves, there will inevitably be those who harbor resentment towards me. The less time I spend here, the better. My presence could very well result in an unwanted disturbance. In that case, I'll have to insist. I still have two more things to say. Please, go ahead. The first is about the guard who helped Dominico send that letter. Ah, I know of what you speak. The guard was indeed deployed from the Palais Memonia's staff. However, as I mentioned earlier, I visited today on personal business. Therefore, I leave that matter in your hands. Well, that makes things a lot easier. Hey now, don't let your imagination run wild. 
Those from up there have a tendency to sympathize with others. However, down here, such thoughts will put you at high risk. I'll have a chat with the guard and remind him to take precautions in the future. I see no issues with that. Great! That's one thing out of the way. Uh, what's the other thing you wanted to say? The other thing was born from my own sense of curiosity. Now, I've heard that you investigated the mutual aid network. Is that right? Yep. Nervalet thought their badges looked familiar. I noticed the small gang as well when I first took over the Fortress of Meripede. They were not great in number, but every member always made sure to stand up for what was right. I've looked into their founder, Vautran, who once stood trial and was sentenced to imprisonment in the fortress. According to existing documentation, Vautran remained disciplined throughout his imprisonment. He had never once engaged in physical or verbal aggression. In other words, how he presented himself in prison was very different from his behavior in court. What? During his trial, I could sense that his feelings were complicated. He appeared to be full of resentment, and I believe he had every right to feel that way. Perhaps he had been putting on an act. An act? Nervillette and Vautran had a close relationship as superior and subordinate. Vautran must have known that the Chief Justice would make an impartial judgment. Thus, the more resentment he displayed, the clearer it would be to those present that you were upholding justice. And to those who had been sitting on the fence, Vautran's act was a very meaningful one. <sighs> That's all from me. Does anyone else have anything to say? Now's your chance. I don't have anything to say. Apart from expressing my gratitude, that is. Well then, let us head back. No need to see us off. Please, take care. That trial is something I rarely bring up in conversation, but... I have always felt deep regret for what happened to both Carol and Vautran. The words he spoke in court often replay in my mind, as if urging me on to do something. But Risley said he never resented you, right? Isn't that a good thing? I believe I now understand what he wanted to tell me. I feel conflicted about those words. How should I describe it? Surprise, relief, fear, and regret. But this blend of emotions has led me to finally understand some things. I would like to hear your thoughts, too. What do you think of me? Paimon agrees with everything Risley said. As Chief Justice, every single one of your trials makes an impact on Fontaine. What do you think, Traveler? Uh, hey, any comments? What I really think is, every trial you've ever judged has left its impression on you. And that's what makes you who you are today. Hmm. That is indeed a reasonable assumption. As I said, I find it difficult to express my emotions because I cannot fully understand myself. But I trust your judgment. Since some time ago, I have begun to notice the changes that have occurred upon my person. These changes were not due to any specific occurrence, but emerged as a result of time itself. I will try to contemplate this further. Thank you both. Is the matter resolved? Yep, we found the person who sent that threatening letter. Risley said he'd keep a close eye on him, so the Melusine should be safe now. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. Sorry for dragging you all into this. There's no need to apologize. Yeah, you didn't drag us in. We got involved of our own accord. Uh, by the way, where's Kiara? At the Palais Marmonia. More than 50 people offered to protect her. Some even hid within the bushes to look out for danger. I was worried that the excess of protection would make her feel uneasy, so I asked her to stay inside the palais. It's very safe in there. <sighs> what a relief! Well, now it looks like the dust has finally settled. To celebrate this joyous occasion, Monsieur Nouvellette, would you be interested in an exclusive interview? That 
That's not how you celebrate. I will consider it. <gasps> really? Of course. My schedule is full for the following weeks, but I should be available next month. Come up with questions during the intervening days, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Yes! Thank you so much, monsieur! Now, if you'll excuse me, I must head back to the Palais and issue a communique to publicize our investigation results. I hope it will assuage the concerns of all. <sighs> Kiora? Uh, Monsieur Nouvellet? Uh, sorry, I accidentally fell asleep. It's quite all right. I'm here to tell you that we have caught the sender of that threatening letter. You're safe now. Thank you, monsieur. And thank you too, traveler and big sis Paimon. Everyone's been so nice to me, so I've always felt really safe. Do you remember Domenico? He was the sender of that letter. Let me think. Uh, I can't remember. My memory isn't that good, so I easily forget things. By the way, I saw Carol in my dreams just now. Hmm. Where's she gone, by the way? I haven't seen her in a long time. Uh... In my dream, she looked really happy. She held my hand and said, Kiara, our dreams have finally come true. I can't remember what our dreams were anymore, and I don't know why. But I felt really happy, too. I can sense your joy. It is indeed a delightful moment. <laughs> Monsieur Nervillet, are you happy, too? Oh, I almost forgot. Am I allowed to go out now? I promised to model for Alov. Of course. Off you go. See you next time, Monsieur, Traveler, and Big Sis Paimon. Hmm. See you next time. <laughs>